Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and it's day four of the auction and the biggest gun in the game is going to be available once again. This is the FV215B183. This was the original tier 10 British tank destroyer before it was removed, replaced with the FV4005. Well, actually, that's not exactly true. At one stage in the game, there was an FV215B183 that led on from the Tortoise, and then there was the FV4005, which led on from the Conway, which was added in after the FV215B183, which was the original Tier 10 British tank destroyer. Then Wargaming, I think, did the right thing by removing the FV215B183 and putting in the Badger instead, which makes way more sense leading on from the Tortoise. Can you believe that this thing, this freak, used to lead on from the Tortoise? It's a completely different kind of gameplay. The Tortoise is well armoured, all in, deal with whatever's in front of you with great DPM. This vehicle, not great DPM, not great armour, but a big old gun to be able to deal with whatever is in front of it. This thing has two flavors of ammunition. Hesh with 1,750 alpha damage, but as we can see against the Skoda, it still hits hard even when it doesn't penetrate with its pretty poor 230 millimeters of pen, but it's got AP rounds with 182.9 millimeters, which means it will overmatch all 60 millimeter plates and deal 1,150 damage. And if you don't have the caliber to overmatch, you still got 310. What's kind of fun is, um, yeah, just, I think, memeing about one, a two, a three, and boom! Oh! Yep, that was a pretty obvious bush that you would be setting in and sitting in Mr. Borask, and this is what is kind of fun about this tank. Honestly, not taking life too seriously. This is not like an FV4005 where you're a glass cannon, you sit on a ridge line and really wait for those kind of ambushes. This is a heavily armoured tank destroyer. From the front, its hull armour isn't anything to write home about. It's got like 150 on the upper hull, its lower plate is awful and gets set on fire frequently. But this thing's turret is pretty darn good. We're talking about 254mm of turret armour, and while it does have some issues up top and high penetration rounds will be able to go through this bar, heat rounds will be able to go through this part of the tank, Compared to the FV4005, this is an amazing turret and it will allow you to sit out in front of a lot of different tanks, especially in a matchup like this against tier 8s and 9s. And I'd say just flat out, this thing is way better than the FV4005. I'd say the FV4005 is probably the, the least competitive tier 10 tank destroyer, although when I'm playing my Lion, it feels like it is the most competitive tier 10 tank destroyer, if you know what I mean. This thing has better accuracy, better aim time and better dispersion when you're moving, as well as way better armor and um, actually better camo than the FV4005 as well. Although it does have significantly worse gun depression, half the gun depression of the FV4005. And its mobility, this thing actually has the better top speed now, now that the FV4005 has been nerfed, but its ground resistances are really poor. So you should do, you, you should take the second field mod and make sure you take the enhanced ground resistances and then you'll actually probably be, end up being faster than the FV405 but it's still not a fast TV it's not like you're going to be bombing it around and thank goodness because this thing it's got such a big punishing gun that the last thing that I would want is to see a vehicle like this bombing it around quickly so what do I recommend for equipment for all of you new FV215B183 players who will be picking this up for free experience well, what I would recommend that you take on this tank is a gun rammer, because I still feel like this tank is DPM based, unlike the FV405, which is more like uh, ambush based. I like to use vents, and I like to use an aiming device on this tank to improve the tragic accuracy, because you have to make the shots count. Some people might want to either drop one of those modules to use a rotation device instead to try and cut down on this vehicle's awful bloom. That's because it has horrible turret traverse dispersion of 0.4. Accordingly, Make sure you get snapshot on your gunner. You really will want to have snapshot on your gunner. And you might even go as far as to use the enhanced snapshot directive, which doubles the effect of snapshot, which will reduce your dispersion when you're turning the turret by 15%, which is kind of the same as using a rotation device. Crazy that to think that taking a crew skill and then paying 10,000 credits a game, which you can get for 9,000 if you buy them in bulk, to be able to double the effect of it, and then suddenly it's kind of as effective as having a rotation device. Ooh, baby! You don't want to expose your side to an FV215B183. That's a spicy shot, 1,600 damage. 
to the 60 TP. And the best thing about this thing is this reload is so long afterwards, you can just have a little bit of a relax, maybe have a little bit of a celebration, a few fist pumps to the air that you managed to one-shot an enemy tank, and then get back into the fray. And oh, AMX M451, ah, don't expose yourself to the British... The, the British Devastator in the form of the FE 215B183. Just a casual 1,662 damage on the move. That was a little bit troll, I guess, but considering that they've only got 2,000 hit points left on their team, uh, is it really that troll? And just like that, with kind of like five shots fired this game, we're up to at least, including the Borask one shot, 5,500 damage already. And now we're going to use Intuition, another best crew skill on this tank, to switch out to AP to go a little bit eco mode at the end of the game and blow the head clean off the Caliban. A much more efficient way of playing this vehicle. 2,250 is the ammunition cost for the armor piercing rounds, whereas you are spending 8,000 credits to fire those premium rounds. And so, with good use of intuition, you can easily break even, or at least not cataclysmically uh, lower your uh, your economy. As I decide to do a bit of a, a roll for style at the end. Yeah, just FV two one five B one eight three things. So. This was my meme effort in the FE215B183, but I think all of you deserve a little bit more damage. So while poor Quickie Baby was only able to do a paltry amount of damage, now we've got the pleasure of watching Unique, who's going to be playing in their FE215B183, and showing you what kind of outrageous damage potential this vehicle can achieve if, I guess, you're just absolutely smashing your way through the enemy team. Now, these vehicles, I'm not going to lie, I think that they are some of the most frustrating tanks to play inside the game. And the reason why I think they're frustrating is because you're investing all of that magical damage potential in a single shot. And unfortunately, uh, more often not than not, the shells don't actually really go where you want them to. However, I can tell you, when they do actually go where you want them to, and as Unique is going to show, the FE215B183, like the FE4005, is capable of some magical things. Like just at the start of the game, oh, there's a chieftain on the enemy team, a Clan Wars reward tank, wanting to make their way up the hill and go and try and contest one of the medium tank locations. Well, FE215B183 says no. And when a tank with a gun that's this big says no to you, you should probably really respect it. Otherwise, you're going to be taking a one-way trip to the garage that usually ends up going pretty quickly indeed. Now, I'm kind of a little bit worried about what the matchmaker is going to be like today. Honestly, with this being sold on Saturday, I guess I really would not recommend playing World of Tanks on Saturday evening. Unless, on the other hand, you are maybe wanting to play a light tank and try and get a light tank mission done. Maybe it will be a good opportunity for you to get a light tank mission done with so many FE215B183s. I expect that on Saturday night is going to be the mother of all awful matchmaking as soon as these are all delivered. They will most likely be delivered at roughly about 10 minutes past 10 UK time. 10 minutes past 11 Central European time. And so if you want to experience some real weird matchmaking, maybe just go and have a look. Uh, just don't jump in uh, if you're, for example, in the middle of a three mark or maybe you're in the middle of wanting to have uh, some of the most competitive games that you want to have. Because there's probably going to be about 10 FE215B183s on either side, I would expect. I'm also quite interested as to whether Wargaming will actually manage to sell 20,000 of these tanks. I'm sure that I'm going to be helping them today, and I'm sure that Unique is going to be helping them today, showing one shot after one shot with the LT432 and the Lorraine both getting vanquished in single shells. But considering how many times Wargaming have sold these in the past, it will actually amaze me if they manage to sell this for a large amount this Saturday. Now, Wargaming have told me that it is going to be sold for free experience on the European server. Very interesting because, for example, a couple of days ago when the K2 was sold, oh my goodness gracious, 1,796, that, that's a full health tier 9 tank destroyer, very healthy tier 9 tank destroyer, smashed in a single shot. But as I was saying, with the K2, on the Asia server, I believe the K2 went for free experience, whereas on the EU server, it went for gold. And as you saw, hopefully, with some of my community posts, 
Uh, the, the, the winning bids were like 8,001 gold. One gold more than the minimum actually won a K2. And that's because, frankly, the statistics of the tier of the tank just aren't really very good. And it's no wonder there isn't very much excitement for the vehicle. It's not exciting looking. It's not got exciting gameplay. It's unsurprising that Wargaming couldn't even manage to get more than pretty much 20,000 min bids for the tank. I also did go on Reddit and I saw that somebody bid 20,000 for the K2. I'm sure they're going to be very unhappy when they find out that some people were picking it up for only 8k. And I'll tell you what, somebody else who isn't going to be very happy is this Lorraine 50T. Probably, firstly, because they actually bought a Lorraine 50T. They would have had to have spent, what was it, 18 tokens or was it 16 tokens to get that tank, which is a joke. The Lorraine 50T is possibly one of the most boring tanks you can ever play in World of Tanks history. But also, probably really unhappy that Unique rolls for 1,790, which is barely higher than the average of this tank's 1,750. Again, one-shotting a Tier 9 tank. This is what the FV does. And when you are rolling good, like Unique, and... Oh, is he going to auto-aim here? Really? I didn't expect that from you, Unique, there, because you've been playing a fantastic game so far. That would have put your damage total up above 8,000 with nine minutes left on this game and a lot of hit points left on the enemy team. I was excited to see where we could go with it. But just this this, this tank, it's just so unbelievably hit or miss and so frustrating to play against. And it's just outrageous. I, 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 <laughs> Did you know that back in the day that this vehicle, when it was first introduced, actually had 275 millimeters of high explosive penetration. Wargaming had to nerf that quite extensively down to 230 because 275 it was enough to be able to go through the front of an E100 turret for example. <laughs> that is disgusting. Whereas at 230 at least this vehicle kind of has to aim at weak points. Uh, but you know when your whole tank is a weak point <laughs> you don't have to aim all that much. As the T-103 is brutally sent back to the garage, and Unique is now up to 8,863 damage dealt, as well as also vanquishing, I think that's the second time. Is that my word of the day, vanquishing uh, a third of the enemy team? So the Conway is telling Unique to fall back. Pretty wise there. Hopefully, by falling back, the Conway will be able to provide some assistance. Because uh, while I guess Unique is probably thinking, Ooh, just one more shot and I've got 10,000 damage. It's also going to be a bit of a tricky situation here. They're down by two tanks. <laughs> well, they're not down by two tanks anymore. 1,384 damage to the side of the Sturitzvang 103B. Very ambitious play by that Swedish tank destroyer. And the Conway definitely helped out Unique there as they finished them off. But oh dear, are they going to be able to reload here? Hopefully the Le Leopard doesn't high roll and Unique will still be able to get into this. Uh, the Leopard actually fires HE trying to go through the side of the tank. And Unique punishes the German medium tank for another 842 damage. Now having destroyed half of the enemy team and over 11,000 damage. Now look, I just want to highlight. This is not a normal kind of game for the FB215B183. This is kind of like a top 10 game in the last five years in this tank. This is from the 1.16 server. Uh, which was quite a while ago. We're talking about 2020 now. So this replay is two and a half years old. It's funny how little the UI has really shifted in two and a half years. So don't expect dumping all of your free experience for this tank, of which I don't know how much it's going to cost. It's probably going to end up costing at least half a million free experience, I'd say. But it depends what Wargaming's min bid is, because I don't really expect it to go that high, because are they really going to get 20,000 people to bid on this vehicle? If they do, hats off to Wargaming, because if they can get 20,000 people to spend that much free experience, especially after the Lion was just sold, yeah, that's going to be a spicy amount of gold conversion they can encourage. But at least Wargaming are actually discounting gold conversion this weekend, which is quite generous of them, considering that they're usually quite sneaky with gold conversions uh, for free experience. Well, they'll do it like a week before the event actually comes out and not tell people about the event and then go, ha ha ha, hee hee hee, people don't have enough free experience. Oh, what a shame. They're going to have to convert at a, a terrible 25 rate instead of the 35 that it is this weekend. But 35 isn't as good as it sometimes is. Sometimes it's 40, I believe. So maybe if you've got diamond hands you want to hold. So, unique now, 
up to eight kills in this game after having dealt with the 50 TP prototype 12,000 damage. All they've really got to do is stay calm, stay cool, deal with the 257, and then, you know what, even if the FE405 manages to take them out, there's still a pretty good chance the SU-130 or the 703-2 will be able to deal with them. But oh dear, Unique rushes the shot, and now the FE appears on full health. And um, yeah, it doesn't look like Unique, you're the only tank with the biggest gun in the game here. As unfortunately, the FE405 shuts them down. And now, the ultimate sadness, and that is that Unique is going to find out momentarily that unfortunately for them, that the 7032 has been AFK this entire game. And you can't really expect an SU to be able to deal with all of the enemy tanks. Although, to be fair, the SU did just manage to catch the artillery, but it's gonna be... <laughs> I'm honest, I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't watch the end of the game after I saw how, how well Unique was doing. But it's such a sad end. The SU crashes, and then the FE actually manages to destroy the, the two of the AFK Object 7032. And boy, what a heartbreak. Imagine getting 8 kills, a Radley Walters medal, and 12,000 damage, and still not winning a game of World of Tanks. Unique, you have my condolences. I bet you, you are still feeling this heartbreak today after all these years. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, is this tank worth it? It's a tough, it's a tough question. I don't exactly know how much free experience this vehicle is going to cost. If it's half a million free experience, that is 20,000 gold at full price, although at a discounted rate, it's going to be 15,000 gold to be able to get this tank. It's quite expensive, considering I got this vehicle back in the day for 6 million credits. Uh, that's a much better deal, right? Is it worth it? It's a fun tank. If you've got a lot of gold, then look, buying something like this is going to be far more fun than for you than getting a K2, for example. However, if you don't have a lot of free experience and you don't have a lot of gold, should you be getting out the wallet and throwing it out your, at your monitor right now to be able to buy gold and convert the free experience? No, not really. You can really have nearly as much fun in an FV4005 and that thing's still available in the tech tree. And while this is still the better tank, undoubtedly, you know, if you can get something for free, you're going to have to grind for it. And you have to spend 6 million credits on picking up the FV405. And it's like 95% as fun as this vehicle. It's just going to be down to you, boys and girls, as to what you feel is worth it with your hard-earned cash. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was the biggest gun in the game. That's not on a self-propelled gun, but self-propelled guns don't even hit hard anymore. Absolutely smashing. Look, Unique, apologies to you for this heartbreak years ago, but, but you know what? 12,000 damage is a pretty good consolation prize, right? And thank you for, um, so much for uploading your replay onto the What Replays website. It was the perfect game to supplement my terrible gameplay with to show the community what the FE215B183 is all about. And I really hope all of you enjoyed this video today. It was just useful for you if you were trying to make your mind up of the FE215B183. If you did and it was useful, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments whether you will bid for the FE215B183 and how much free experience are you willing to part with for this tank. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.